Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing well. I'm Kirti Sophia Panachan and in today's session we'll be beginning the poem No Men Are Foreign by James Kirkup and this is part 2. A brief introduction about the author James Kirkup and about the poem was dealt in the previous video lecture. I hope you will go and check it out. Now we move on to the poem. No Men Are Foreign by James Kirkup Remember, no men are strange, no countries foreign. Beneath all uniforms, a single body breathes like ours. The land our brothers walk upon is earth like this, in which we all shall lie. In the first stanza, the poet introduces the theme of the poem. He states that no men are strange and no country is foreign. He says that the body is the same for every individual, like you and me. And the only thing is that the clothing created by men is different. Whatever we are wearing is different, but all the rest is just the same. Adding that the earth is also one and whole. The land we walk upon is similar to the land every individual walks upon. The poet stresses the fact that there are no divisions in us. The earth belongs to everyone. We all have the same body and we all have the same earth. Moving on to stanza 2. They too, aware of sun and air and water, are fed by peaceful harvests, by wars long winter starved. Their hands are ours, and in their lines we read a labour not different from our own. In the second stanza of the poem, the poet stresses on Mother Nature. The poet says that Mother Nature doesn't discriminate and has provided each individual with the same harvest to keep us alive and well. Poet adds that we also get our equal share of land, sunlight and air. Peaceful farmers feed us and during winters when there is war and death, each one of us suffers together. The poet aims at showing us that we suffer and prosper together. So if we want to live, we must live in harmony. This world does not belong just to us, but it belongs to everybody. The air, the water, the sun, it all belongs to everyone and we must live peacefully in harmony. We together prosper together or if we indulge in war, we suffer together. And whatever the earth gives us, the earth gives in an equal form to every one of us. Mother Earth never ever shows any discretion to any human being that lives in this world. And that is what the poet tries to reveal in these lines. Moving on to the next stanza, stanza 3. Remember, they have eyes like ours that wake or sleep, and strength that can be won by love. In every land is common life that all can recognize and understand. This stanza deals with love. The poet urges the readers like us to remember that we have similar features that perform a similar function. How then can we be different? He says, 
apart from physical similarities, we also have emotional strength which can be won by love. He advises love as the remedy for war. He also asks the reader to remember that each land, whether we have visited it with our own eyes or not, has life. Life springs in every corner of the earth. These lovely things want to live and strive and laugh. They do not wish for war or death. The poet urges us to understand and recognize this fact. Human beings all around the world are doing the same thing. That is, they function unlike. And what we must keep in our mind is that love will triumph at the end. And he advises that war will not give us anything. It would destroy our peace. It would destroy our harmony. It would destroy this world. And we will lose a lot of things. Instead of war, we should hold tight on love. Love can make this world a better place. We could survive in happiness and be peaceful if we share love with each other. Life exists all around the world and just like us, there are human beings all around the world and they are very similar to us. That is, human beings around the world act in a similar manner and the physical and every every features are kind of a similar way and just like us nobody in this world wants to die everybody wants to be loved wants to laugh wants to live a happy life so the poet is urging us or requesting us to understand this and do accordingly Moving on to the fourth stanza of the poem. Let us remember whenever we are told to hate our brothers, it is ourselves that we shall dispose, betray, condemn. Remember, we who take arms against each other. In this stanza, the poet urges us to always remember that we are one and cannot be divided. We must have that unity. This world belongs to us, not just to you or me. He states that whenever we are told to condemn a certain person or country, it is us who makes a choice. That is, whenever a person is asking us to hate someone, or to hate a country it is our decision or it is our choice whether to do it or not it is us who chooses to pick up the arms arms means weapons so it is just us who decides to take weapons against others just because of hatred we should remember that killing another human being is not the solution to our problem when we are in a state of war, both countries lose many human beings and hence nobody is winning and everybody is losing while we are on a war. The poet tells us to remember this when we decide on picking up weapons. Whenever we turn, again, turn against a country, we turn against our fellow human beings or we are turning against our brothers. So. The poet urges us or requests us to avoid such situation or just it is our decision whether we must go for a war or not. We must not listen to others while they tell us to hate somebody. It is we who decide whether to hate or not. So as human beings, we have the liberty to think and decide wisely. Moving on to the last stanza of the poem, stanza 5. It is the human earth that we define. Our hells of fire and dust 
outrage the innocence of air that is everywhere our own. Remember, no men are foreign and no countries strange. When two countries fight, it is the individuals who are at loss. Death benefits no one. With war, we disrupt our natural balance. We disrespect God and we make the earth impure. Whenever war happens, dead bodies lay on barren ground. There's fire everywhere and there's smoke and all. Poet compares the fire to the fire that happens in hell. And he considers the dead bodies on the ground as making the earth impure. The poet provides us with a horrific picture of war and warns us against it. He then finishes the poem by writing the first line in reverse, thus solidifying the message. So in this final stanza, the poet is revealing a huge message to his readers. While we are on war, we are killing a lot of people and these wars actually destroy the earth. Defile means to damage the purity or appearance. So earth is very pure and extremely beautiful. And it is damaged while a war happens. And due to this war, a number of people are dead. And a lot of fire and smoke happens on top of the earth. This leads to the impurity of the earth. And the dead bodies are also adding to make earth impure. So the poet ends the poem telling us a reminder that before going into the war, we should take a moment and think of our actions. As in war, there are no winners. The central theme of the poem No Men Are Foreign revolves around the brotherhood of all humankind. The poet points out that all our boundaries and differences are human made. Throughout the poem, James Kirkup tries to show the similarities between all humans. He urges people to drop their weapons and welcome one another as part of their own to bring peace and love in this world without any hate or discrimination. So that's all for today. I hope today's session was fruitful for you all. See you again in the next class. Bye-bye.